welcome back to the show. This episode, uh, if we're calling these episodes, we're going to talk a little bit about what Freemasonry is, what we do in it, and what we try to accomplish in it, and maybe a little bit about everybody's perception of Freemasonry and how that's changed a little bit over time. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to start off and ask you, what is kind of your elevator pitch, your general explanation of what Masonry is? You know, if somebody comes up and they see you have that square and compass badge on the back of your car and they ask you what it's all about, what is your kind of short general explanation to the person on the street? That's a good question. Um, I'd normally tell them I'm looking for the Temple of Treasure. Um, I'm hot on its trail, and I'm pretty sure it's just around the corner. Freemasonry is is, is all about taking a good man and making him better. Um, it teaches them so much that you need to succeed in life, um, both from um, a family perspective, from a moral and philosophical perspective, uh, from a business perspective. Um, it, it teaches you a solid foundation on which to grow. It will teach you confidence, business skills, leadership skills, morals. It will reinforce those morals, and uh, hopefully it will put you in a position in your life, around your family, in your sphere of influence, where people will look at you and say, um, he's a good man. How did he get there? Um, how can I do that as well? I'm always amazed that the longer I'm in it, the more I realize the the number of skills that it teaches and the way it does it. You're right, it does cover you know, morality and ethics and leadership and budgeting and accounting and motivational skills and just the gamut of, of everything. And it's all done in a well thought out system that kind of unfolds itself to you as, as you, as you grow, it, it gives you more knowledge and more experiences and more opportunities. Yeah. The, the, the large system is, I think perfection in how it's put together, and and it's been perfected over many hundreds of years. Um, the lessons that you learn, you learn at the right time. Um, when I was when I was going into Freemasonry in the first couple of years, I'd ask questions like, "Why is it done this way? Explain this to me." And for more experienced Masons, more often than not, the the answer would be, "Look over here, get this book, um, study here." It was rare at the start anyways, and it was someone would actually give me the answer I was looking for, and that annoyed me. It made me go look, it made me read, it made me research, but it also after a time I came to the understanding of why they done that. Um, you have to be in a certain point of understanding to actually understand what they say, what the answer is, otherwise it has no meaning and it passes right over your head. And the whole system of Freemasonry and the large system is built that way. It's a progressive system of science and morality where you learn as you go and you learn in steps in a particular sequence um, from which you learn the most. It, it's kind of like that, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah. But in this case, it's, you know, you may not be capable of drinking yet. Exactly. Uh, you, you've got to be at a, a, a certain level of understanding, you know, starting with the basics and building upon them before you're in a position to to really grasp and understand the next ones. Yeah. And and, and that's something you, you gain as you go through as you go through the degrees, as you go through the chairs, as you as you talk to other Freemasons and you, you take part in the system itself. And the, which is and as a Freemasons would understand that. If if you're not a Freemason or you're thinking about being a Freemason or you're in your first six months or just year as a Freemason, a lot of this doesn't really mean very much to you. What was your understanding or perception? What did you think of Freemasonry before you actually joined? I didn't know much. Uh, to be quite honest, it's uh, the the extent of my knowledge was basically the movie The National Treasure. <laughs> uh, like so many. Uh, I saw it, uh, you know, saw a few of the History Channel things on, you know, all the conspiracies and, and uh, things they're attributed to. Uh, I knew there were, you know, several presidents that were Masons, but I didn't know a lot about it. I didn't have any family members that were Masons. I think my grandfather might have been, 
um, but he passed before I was able, ever able to talk to him about it. So, so, so what made you actually take the step to go and, and knock on the door and, and fill a petition and, and sign up? What, what, what was, was there a, was there an event? What was the motivating thing behind that? Uh, really it was quite honestly, it was national treasure. It was the movie. It was the movie. I, I watched it. Awesome. <laughs> and it, it, it sparked some interest, and I had done just enough research and uh, was talking with a friend of mine and came to the conclusion that, you know, I didn't believe all the conspiracy theories and the New World Order and, and all this stuff, but I knew there was some next-level shit going on. <laughs> there, there was there was something to this to have a fraternity this large, you know, with this much history and it, it's been around for so long that there had to be something to it and i wanted to know what it was okay so i i started the journey of trying to find a lodge and figure out the process uh how did that go was that a fast smooth process it wasn't um knowing now and i think we should do an episode on this later um, for anyone who's interested in being a Mason, giving them some tips on how to accomplish it. Yeah, lessons and perseverance and patience. Uh, I went through, uh, hopped on the internet, and started doing a search and found my uh, state's Grand Lodge website. And they had a contact us form uh, that I filled out. And I don't remember how long, but it was, it was quite a while. Um, I finally heard back from them, and they gave me a phone number to a local lodge's secretary. Um, I called that lodge and found out that that secretary was on vacation and paperwork got shuffled and mixed. And I think six, nine months later, I tried again through the Grand Lodge website. Uh, Actually, an interesting story. I, I don't think you've ever heard this one. When I was going through this whole process, I got the call and got the phone number for the lodge secretary while I was at work. Okay. And I jotted down on a little note card, you know, Freemason and a phone number. I was walking between buildings and out of this, I don't know what it was, a gust of wind inside a building. The card blew out of my hand, twirled in the air and shot down the air conditioning vent on this bridge between two buildings. So you, you lost you lost the card with the number on it. I lost the card with the number on it. I could see it. Mm-hmm. I walked over and I looked down the vent and not knowing about the Masons and, you know, it's, it's a secretive deal. You know, I was worried that I had, you know, I think I might even had my name on the card. <laughs> so my name, Freemasons and a phone number. Oh, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble. So I called like building services and had some building engineers you come not. out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and they had to like pull the grate and everything. And they, they got down there with these big, plier things and got a hold of it then i'm trying to like you know get the card away from them before they have a chance to read it once they've retrieved it wow i did not know that yeah it uh well i i was actually quite nervous about the whole process and then uh you know months later i actually got in contact with a a second lodge uh which is where i ended up joining and uh it's been a great experience since then but it did take a while uh, because I didn't know how to navigate, you know, kind of the Masonic world. Yeah, and and the, this this same, I had this, a fairly similar experience. It took a while um, to get through. My interest in Freemasonry um, came when I was very young. When I was tra- walking on the streets in Glasgow, I always passed this building um, on Dumbarton Road that was a four-story Masonic Lodge. There was there was a store on the bottom level, and the top three floors was the lodge, different parts of it. And they had the big square and compass on on the stone building and the edifice. I always wondered what that was. And um, as I travelled around Scotland, I'd see those symbols all over the place. And I wanted to know more about it. But because of who I was and my upbringing... Being a Highlander Scot Roman Catholic, that wasn't going to happen. Um, and it wasn't until I'd been in the United States for 14, 15 years that I saw the symbols again. And uh, as you did, I tried to contact the Grand Lodge. Heard nothing for months and months. Um, looked up a local lodge. 
contacted them, heard nothing for months and months, wrote to another lodge, um, finally heard back as I was going on vacation. Uh, four months after that, I was initiated as an entered apprentice. I was as initiated as an entered apprentice. The secretary came over and said, I got this last week. It was the first letter that I wrote to the Grand Lodge oh, almost nine, ten months before. Yeah, so as masonry is a, you know, this this almost near perfect system of <laughs> teaching, you know, these, these wonderful lessons, it doesn't... It's, it is a volunteer organization. Um, it's not done by, you don't get paid for any of this. Freemasons do an awful lot of work. Secretaries are overworked, overburdened. Um, they have families, they have jobs, they have wives, they have all sorts of other stuff to take up time. So um, as a volunteer organization, sometimes things don't move as fast as you would want them to. No, um, but there are some benefits to that. Yes, there are. So we'd like to thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us. Um, we will see you in our next episode. Don't forget to check out madonicacademy.com. Thank you. Uh, we need a little thing like live life on the square, live life on the level, or tagline. Yeah, we need a tagline. Like, um, it's okay to be square. Um, what's the part in the closing? Meet, yeah, meet on the level, at by the plum, and part upon part the square. Upon the square. That's it. That's our tagline. Meet on the level, act by the plum, and part upon the square. That's a long tagline, is it? Yeah. It's okay to be square. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Masonic Academy online at MasonicAcademy.com, Facebook.com slash Masonic Academy. We'll see you on the next episode of Masonic Academy.